Cullen, I just want to say a massive thank you for joining me on this session here today to chat through just uh, life as a, as a client of Investikit, but also as someone who works closely uh, with us from a business perspective and Investikit for many of your clients. So thank you again for, for joining us. Absolute privilege and honor to be here, Arjun. Thanks for hosting this, my friend. Mate, uh, look, where do I start when it comes to your accomplishments and your team's accomplishments? Um, Cullen, you're your top five broker in Australia. How does it feel hearing that? Because this is not a small industry. Like, I think, what, 17,000, oh. 18,000 people, if I'm not mistaken? How, how do you feel about that? Look, it's, I think what it does show, it shows the, the benefits that people get by having an advocate like a broker on your side. It's gone, it's now 70% of all loans in Australia are written through brokers. Um, so like that, having that advocate on your side is such an important part. And um, shout out to my team. We have a team of 17 at Legal Home Loans. Like to be able to get to that level, um, it takes a great team to be able to accomplish that kind of um, feat for our clients. Um, it's just a reflection of our strategy. We go out in the market. We don't say we're all things to all people. We're very simple in our approach. We love lawyers. We look after just legal professionals because legal professionals, as you know, Arjun, they're busy, they're time sensitive and they're high expectation and banks and most brokers can't handle that type of client, but we're very, very happy and honored to serve them and pr very proud hand on heart to be able to say we're the only uh, mortgage service in Australia exclusively for lawyers. Look, it's, uh, I'm very humbled to have you as a friend and, and just see the journey that you and your team have been on and of course, many of the, the people that are needing that help as well. So start off with massive congratulations to you and the team on being top five in the whole country, which is phenomenal. Thanks so much, Arju. And I'll, um, the team will probably see this. So I'll make sure <laughs> they know and they love working with your team, Nikita, and the whole bunch at uh, Investikit. I think the difference that you guys make um, is we know that our clients are high expectation. You know, with some referral partnerships, it's like, gosh, I hope they do a good job. We know if we send a client your way, they're going to have a great experience. Um, and that's why I dare say you've had a high conversion with our clients because they trust our word and you guys deliver. It's that um, Uncle G philosophy of over-promise and over-deliver, which you do. No, thank you so much. Well, I mean, on that note, I feel that as a, as a business as popular as yours and where there are so many professionals in the opposite side, which is our side here in the buyer's agency space, uh, many of them reach out from time to time, will try to build relationships with your business, or many of them would, you know, uh, feel like, you know, hey, they're really up for the challenge to look after your clients. And um, I guess on that note, what's made you feel very comfortable in working with our team as one of the core buyers agents together versus, say, the many others who might reach out? Good, it's a good question, Arjun. And I think it really comes down to our demographic of clients. Lawyers and real estate agents, let's say I'm going to call the spade a spade, they don't mix at the best of times. Um, and they see when things go wrong. And so lawyers are, are quite a skeptical bunch. So I think one of the leading reasons when I can say, look, we're going to introduce you to a team that specializes in looking after time poor professionals like yourself. So you've got that expertise piece. They niche down and they only look at neutrally and positively geared properties in regional areas. They're not going to try and sell you some off the plan in Queensland or anything like that. So there's number two. And number three, it's transparency in the way your fee operates. They're, they're quite um, um, open in the way they get charged when they talk to their clients. They love the fact that they say, guys, we're a fixed fee service. This is our fee and we know we can deliver. And I think those three things combined, along with our word of saying our recommendation holds weight. And we say to our clients, we get nothing from this relationship, but we know you're time poor and you need to find something. You're not going to be able to do it in your role. You know it. And you need someone to help you. These are the team to help you. And um, we often give your name along with four and five other buyers agents. And you are literally always the ones that are in the, the top two shortlist when they talk to people. So I think it, it speaks volumes. The fact that you're able to convert so many of our high expectation clients when lawyers as a demographic are so skeptical. Yeah, I mean... Uh, I think like where I've appreciated you as well is that it hasn't just been this uh, recommendation to go, no, go speak to them, only them. You've kind of talked about, like you said, then many others, because the key there is that you're always acting in their best interest to give them that opportunity and make oh, them. It, it, it's vendor agnostic. It's vendor agnostic. We always say um, here's three 
financial planners we can put the name forward three accountants and five um, buyers agents and it keeps it fair and I always say give these guys a call each one test them out ask them questions and go with the one you feel comfortable with but if you want someone to grow your portfolio that specializes in regional areas I think correct me if I'm wrong Arjun I don't know if there's anyone else doing what you guys are doing to be fair yeah, look, I mean, we, we try and from our perspective, um, really create some separation in, in the research we want to offer and and the proven track record of consistently outperforming markets. And of course, yeah. uh, also having some of the highest quantity of clients that own three or more properties. Uh, that's been important to us because only 10% of Australians uh, own, 10% uh, of Australian investors, which is far less than the number of Australians. In the actual population, right? Yeah. Yep. So I think there's about just over 2 million investors and of those investors, 10% own three or more. And we're at just over half of our client base in that bucket. So that's something that's very important. That's incredible. That's no, incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Obviously, I think as well, I wanted to touch on to another part, which is your own journey. Um, I, I genuinely believe that advocacy doesn't just come from, I guess, uh, introducing others. It also is that level of trust where you've gone Hey, Arjun, um, I want to work with your team and I want to work with your team, not once, but on multiple occasions, which you have. Could you explain, I guess, the journey from a client's perspective on what you feel was a core difference maker to not, not only referring us clients, but now working with us too? I think it's a, it's a good question, Arjun. I always say um, you're, you shouldn't be recommending people to your clients if you haven't yourself at least experienced what the service is like. And it was a no-brainer for me because... A few of our clients have bought multiple times off you. And um, when it got to the third or fourth property for one of our clients in particular, I knew, I just knew that when I was getting to that point in my uh, wealth journey, uh, when I needed to buy my first and then second investment property, that I need you on my side. Um, and I think because of the proven track record, you got results. And the fact that people I think the reciprocity, the fact that they're going back to you so many times which I know is an important strategy for you, an advocacy piece for your existing client base, but also then referring you on and saying you should speak to their friends and family and co-workers, I think also speaks volumes. So that was a big thing for me. But also too, I'm obviously from Albury Wodonga. I'm from the regional areas of Australia. Um, I went to uni in a regional area as well. So I'm, I think I've got a, a, a mind open to most um, strategies that make sense. And for me, your particular focus on regional positively and neutrally geared solutions in the areas where if you were to buy in Sydney or Melbourne, you're going to have to buy at least double the price to get the same rental yield, which in my mind is cognitive dissonance. If you're looking at a, a long-term wealth strategy, it's not repeatable, um, reproducible. Um, so from that particular for me, um, and I checked it with my accountant and financial planner as well, which I recommend all my clients to do, it made sense it made perfect sense to go with you. And, and you know, you've uh, then moved on from the Albury Wodonga purchase to Adelaide. And uh, it was very exciting to make that purchase in another, another major city. Um, and we were able to purchase that off market, if you recall. Now, when, I you do recall. At, I do recall. <laughs> when you look back at it, the comparable sales, the bank valuations, I guess, you know, for many professionals out there, there's case studies and deals and whatnot. But the thing I love about the mortgage broking world is, you can see right through the bull crap and see the valuation, see the actual results. Um, how have you found that post-purchase experience looking back now, seeing some of these value gains and seeing also what the people you referred over and the value gains for them? Yeah, look, it's not uncommon that um, I'll talk to my clients after they've settled with you because we do a, we, we check in with our clients. We're relentless at that every six months and um, we'll do a, you know, it's, it's complimentary if you're going through an elite broker. So we order the complimentary valuations and, the, you know, it's not uncommon for me to find that they've gone up 50 to 100,000, um, at least 50 in that short space of time. And I know for me, in my experiences, the two properties we've got together, it's the same story. Um, so it just shows that, uh, if you buy well and there's a strategy there um, and this is a bank valuation that we're getting at the time which is giving an accurate representation when you're buying it so you know you're not overpaying and afterwards it's a bank valuation on how much the market has moved so if your bank valuation is saying that it's gone up 50,000 per property in the space of six months you know, that is back, definitely a BS detector because you know the agents that tell you it's gone up this, you can actually rely on that because 
you know, I always say it doesn't matter what the agent is telling you, it's what the bank says it's worth at the end of the day, because they're the ones that are either lending the money or using it as a basis to do further equity releases. And they, they never say, oh, give me the valuation that the real estate agent's done or the appraisal. They never say that. They go, we'll do our own valuation, please. And that's the source of truth. So, um, yeah, it's a very yeah, good I, I, yeah, definitely. And I think um, in the situations that you have advocated for our clients, there's always some great benefit or little insight that you can tell them, you know, for instance, I know it doesn't happen all the time, but um, the one that we were getting, I think that it was a, they, they needed to sell. There was a reason there. Um, and I think that, that was the reason we were able to get it at such a great price. And I think had someone had um, gone the traditional route of doing it themselves and um, going on the realestate.com and, and domain, um, I had one of my friends tell me, I think it might've been you, Arjun, that going on real estate and domain, for lack of a better term for the single people out there, I'm happily married, but it's like getting on Tinder and it's all the people that put themselves out there, but there's a whole bunch of people that don't put themselves on those realestate.com and real estate uh, and domain. That is where, is really where the value of people like yourself can get them absolute bargains. Mm. And uh, no, you may raised a good point. That person had to sell and we were able to get that off market uh, at a discounted price. And the fact that the property was tenanted and under rented, it's a trifecta because it's like, I need to get rid of it. I can't have owner occupied demand or stage this property neatly. Uh, and an investor may not be happy at it at first glance because the rent's not where it needs to be. Um, that's right. where, you know, you remain patient the whole way through in both properties. You said, I'm looking past the, the rental today. I'm trusting the data that's here to say it could rent much more. And on both occasions, what were the rental results that you saw once you, I guess, saw the starting point of it being under rented? And I'm sure there would have been a part of you that thought, oh, that's a big gap between what Arjun's saying and what it is. Correct. Is it really going to get that? Now looking, and they've both kind of been re-rented or increased. What are your thoughts on that journey looking back and now? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great example. And that's exactly what we uh, talked about and discussed um, in the fact that when we were going in, there was obviously an interesting time in the market as well, to be quite frank, COVID. And some of these people and some of these wonderful tenants that were on there, obviously they're going through hard times. So they would have signed a monetarium or something that lowered the rent, which is what we experienced in some of the places that we got one, at least one of them. Um, and we had this candid conversation that it's the long-term strategy and I agreed. Um, recently, by chance, they've both um, um, come for renewal. And, you know, we had, a, we, had a, we had a chat and we said, like, what's the strategy? And, and you, you ultimately said, look, I recommend this, but here's what you ultimately have to do. You have to base it on your own comfort. Mm -hmm. And I looked at it and I had your data and I actually went back to both agents and said, you know what? You know, I'm ha the tenants are great, but I need to look at what the market is paying. And this is the data and this is what, the way I want to go. Um, within a week, I um, increased the rent on $100. Um, and that's a massive jump if you think about it, but the client, re the, the tenant resigned and mm -hmm. we've gone up 25 for the, the releasing of the other one. So 125 per week times that by, you know, 52, 54, it, it, if you're patient and you're willing to wait, it can mean massive cash flow for you. Yeah. Tr tremendous, tremendous outcomes. And thank you, I guess, for staying patient and, and trusting that process, because that's a big cut part of, you know, working in these relationships that core trust together. But I wanted to jump on one part that was quite interesting. And you talked about the many people looking online or doing it themselves versus say using a professional. If you were to say, okay, you've got the mic, you've got your group of customers in front of you. And there's one group, you know, pre this discussion that goes, Hey, we're just going to do what we always do. Go online, do it, do it ourselves. And there's another group that goes, Hey, we've used Investigate in the team. When you want to give the other group any advice of doing it themselves versus a, a, a professional, what are some of the things that you'd share reflecting on your journey and the, and the clients that we've worked together with? It's a good question. I always um, say when we get pre-approvals organized and for those that uninitiated out there who have never had a pre-approval before, they last for 90 days. Um, it's a typical question. Um, we always front load it and tell our clients, look, we do have these relationships available, but by all means, go out in the market and do it yourself for at least the first three months. See what it's like. See how many people go into these open homes and things like that. And then after three months, We'll check in at 45 days, but at that three month mark, let's reassess. Um, and it's quite like unusual, our client base are doing, because most of them buy. Um, lawyers, when they get a pre-approval, the data for our base says they'll buy within six months. Usually they'll roll it over once 
and six months. There is that odd, um, you know, chance that they'll have it for the average broking term. Most brokers have their pre-approvals to 12 months plus. So for the cohort, for the cohort of people that have their pre-approvals like a gym membership, have it and never use it. I always articulate the value of, you know, your time is very valuable as a legal professional, your, your billable hour. If you think of how long you've invested in doing it yourself, you, pro you probably get paid more, and no disrespect, you probably do get paid more at McDonald's, the amount of time that you've spent on this, as opposed to the billable hours at work that you could have done elsewhere. So you really, the people that I find use your service and a broker's service are the lawyers that really value time um, and can quantify how much time and value they do get for the time they don't have to put into it. And um, I would say it's probably most prudent at that six month mark, if they haven't found something, I go, I really urge you to go and speak to someone because it's not going to get any different. Like um, the, uh, you probably get um, this type of client, they're called the shopper that want to do it themselves and they can do everything. And I go, great. How come you've never made a decision? I, I, I often ask them, why haven't you made a decision yet? And that always takes them back because it's like, it makes them reflect, yeah, why haven't I made a decision? Um, and I think it's, um, they're scared to make a decision, even if they had the option right in front of them, the perfect option. I had clients like that in COVID when the market was down, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to see what happens. Um, see when the market recovers. What are you going to wait to the market? That makes no sense, but you know, that's your journey. Um, so what I would say is I think, again, reiterating the clients that use your service and the service of an elite mortgage broker are the ones that value time and can quantify the, the small amount that they pay you as a fee, they can actually go, you know, I'm going to get this much value in return. So don't, I've got clients that say, don't even worry about the fee. I just need it done. Boom, let's do it. And th those are the clients. And I think your type of clients that really have the best wins are that barrister partner level. So, you know, 40 years plus, most likely married or, you know, have a couple of kids, they're wanting to increase their wealth portfolio, they have a certain amount of disposable income, that's the perfect type of client for you. If you're a first home buyer, I'm going to say it outright, um, your service is probably not catered for yours, Arjun, unless they're buying in regional areas because you're trying to get your foothold and every dollar counts. Certain type of clientele, I, I just want to flag that. Yeah, I think it's been, a, it's been a really good point because, you know, the clientele that we work closely with, um, A, similar to yourself like you've been on this journey and, and I, I share this very openly and I've shared this in other videos as well um our fees aren't cheap right no and, and you know you've 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 worked with us and on two occasions now and working on the third as we speak um and then from that perspective you've also had many clients who've engaged a four or five times in a span of one or two years um this is no small amount in terms of fees we're talking four or five times equals you know, 60,000 plus in, in fees. So when you look at this and you think of the investment that they're making, um, what would you feel are the top few reasons for them to look back and go, hey, uh, these are the reasons why they're spending that fee when it comes to working with the investigative team? Now, again, a great question, Arjun. And I think, um, I guess, before we delve into um, the client aspect, from a business owner standpoint, standpoint I totally respect the... Um, the strategy because most businesses let, let alone real estate and in mortgage broking most businesses go out and try and acquire new clients um to the detriment of their own clients the classic banking model bring a lot of people in with the low rate and then raise the rates and don't and forget about the existing clients your model actually turns it completely on its head whereas you actually love existing clients and your focus is existing clients and you add new clients gradually but you're really focusing on adding that value and i think I, I would say existing clients like myself and my clients who I've referred over that use your service know that and they, 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 they feel the love and they, they trust the amount of work that goes into it because you explain to them, you actually don't just give them the data, you actually explain, hey, the 10 properties I am going to show you, just to let you know, there was 100 hours that went into collating that. So there's a lot of like to get to that shortlist based on the investor kit standard, there's a lot of work that goes into that. So they know how much work goes into it. So they know that when they get something, it's, it's of high value. And the fact that they know the process and they realize how easy the process is, it's like a rinse and repeat. They're like, well, I can definitely say yes to a second and a third because Arjun and the team made it so easy. But 
I, I would say, I dare say, there's a lot of experiences with both brokers and buyers agents out there that pro, and banks. Let's talk about banks. Make the process so horrendous. You get to the end of the first property, you go, would you do it again? No help. No I'm exhausted. Way. That's what like, many of them feel like, right? They yeah, like, they're like, that felt like the worst six to th three to six months of my life. I never want to do it again. But, you know, I always say to my team, you know, how easy are you to do business with dictates how successful you're going to be and how comfortable existing clients come will come back to you. Like we've learned a lot in the four years that we've been in business and lawyers aren't the easiest clients to get along with. But we love lawyers and we know our process and we know our stuff so much that when it comes to the six to 12 months checks, um, they may say, Cullen, I don't have time for you now. But we know that that means that when they do come to us 18 to 24 months later, we don't take any love loss. They know that we're there for them. And I think your clients feel that as well. Um, and if you're getting repeat clients from a legal professional, a lawyer, it speaks volumes because they are tenacious. They're driven. They're very intelligent. Um, they're quite an alpha type personality and they don't take no prisoners with the, their expectation. And I always say for those not um, abreast with working with lawyers, compared to the civilian or non-lawyer, as I call them, it takes 10 negative interactions for a, a legal professional to blow their top um, for a normal person. Sorry, but a legal professional, it only takes 10 seconds and they can go from zero to 100 because they <laughs> deal with conflict every day. So again, I tip my hat off to you uh, because it's not easy. And I think them knowing the, the, the value and the time spent in what you do and making the process easy are the two biggest things is the reason why they do business with you and the validation afterwards from our valuations to say you made a great decision. Who doesn't want to hear but that after they buy, it's gone, it's risen in value. That, that's just the ultimate validation in terms of their long-term strategy. Not that they're going to flip the property, but it just means that for you, that you can release equity and you can buy another one for them. Well, thank you, Colin. It's, uh, it's been great insight on that and, and the importance of that, I guess, point with that client base. Um, there are many others who watch this that are professionals in the industry like yourself, uh, finance brokers, accountants, financial planners um, who might be watching this. And I guess one thing that stands out to me is your ethics as well when it comes to working together. It's always been, hey, we're working together on this client, but Arjun, I have my services and charges that I charge the bank and we work for our clients and you have your fees and services and we don't have any exchange of commissions or anything like that. So really, it's a, it's a, there's no monetary incentive here for you when working together with myself. Thinking about that and thinking of all the professionals out there who might be looking to build a relationship with businesses like ours, what are the tips that you look at for them to go, hey, these are the concrete benefits for your business when working together with Investigate and reflecting on that? I think the um, top three benefits as to why we use, you know, your elite service there, Arjun, and Investigate, especially for investors who have been pre-approved for an investment property is um, not many people know this, but brokers, when they get a pre-approval, it doesn't actually generate any business or revenue for the company unless someone actually buys. So for new, new brokers out there or those with existing pre-approved books, it is not helping you or your client for them to have a pre-approval that goes nowhere. It's actually a disservice to them. It's a waste of their time and it's a waste of your time. So we look at it as a way and a great way of engaging with our clients at 45 days, three months, six months to say, how's your property journey going? Any properties that have broken your hearts, what was one that you really liked in particular and why didn't you buy it? And if they can, can't answer those you know, really clearly, then they say, I think it's important you speak to a professional like Arjun because it sounds to me like it's not the strategy. The strategy is in place. We've got our pre-approval. It's the execution. You need help with the execution. Um, so sending our clients and referring them over to say, look, we get nothing from it, that they'll handle everything means that you are going to end up with happier clients that do use your service because it makes you look good because they've managed to find something. And lawyers are quite transactional in their approach. They hate unclosed loops like they've got a pre-approval they want to use it like yeah. they don't want to leave something half ticked otherwise on their list of to-do list it's buy an investment property i can't tick it because i haven't done it <laughs> so they get that sense of completion and probably there's lots of books you and i've read that can attest to that kind of logic but it is um, the second thing is you're going to end up with a higher conversion of your clients that actually proceed to settlement um, and 
are going to want to do it again afterwards because it's a great experience. That's that whole seamless, you know, finance and um, settlement process of finding the property with yourselves. That is just great. And I think lastly is the fact that they now have that sense of accomplishment of, hey, I've got that property. They're going to tell their friends, their family, whoever, that when that, whenever, you know, Bob at the barbecue says, oh, I don't think you should get a buyer's agent. You know, Bob, everyone has Bob. Oh, I do it all myself. Bob, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I used Investor Kit and they were fantastic. And this is what you need to know. Do not listen to Bob. And my, my if there's any sorry, uh, tagline. Uncle from, sorry, Uncle Bob. If there's any tagline that people should remember from this is do not seek advice on the journey from those that have never left home. Unfortunately, in this life, many people are willing to give their advice. But when you ask them, have you done it? They go, no. It's like, why am I listening to you? It's mm. no value to me. Get the advice from people who have done it. And I think, you know, we talk about raving fans in our company. Your clients that go through Investor Kit become raving fans. And that's what you want. They'll tell five people about your services as opposed to the 10 from a negative experience they would have had at somewhere else. So you're getting that um, word of mouth, traditional word of mouth. And I know you're an obsessive marketer as well. And when they see you out marketing as an existing client, they're like, oh, they're doing some great things. They do it to us as well. They see us in the lift as a client and they send me a text, Cullen, it's great to see you guys doing so well. Because people want to do business with people they see and foresee that are doing well because it validates their decision to use you. Um, and I'd encourage those looking to use you as a referral partner or what have you, reciprocity. Don't come in saying, what clients can you give me? Because everyone does that. They go and have a coffee and go, what clients can you give me? No, give Arjun a client. Say, I've got a great client. Here you go. Because next time Arjun needs an accountant, a financial planner, what have you, they'll be, he'll say, look, I, I tell you who's who I've got at the top of my list, Barry. Because Barry, unbeknownst to the client, gave him another client that has looked up, they've looked after. It's all about reciprocity. So Go, look for three people that you can you can introduce to Arjun. I promise you, he's a man of his word. He'll actively look for three people he can refer back. So don't do this whole cash under the table thing. Don't ask for what you can get. Give, 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 give. Then ask. It's Gary Vaynerchuk. Thank you, Cullen. Thank you so much for your time today. Uh, Australia's one of Australia's leading brokers, teams and the space to go for uh, all legal professionals. So thank you again for your support as a client of our business and also for the many clients that we've worked together on. And I look forward to working with you and your business again. Agreed, my friend. Thank you so much for being you and doing what you're doing. It's a great service you offer, my friend. Appreciate it. Thanks, Arjun.